Hello! I'm Superfist. <clears throat> I'm here with my good buddy Michael. Hi, oh, Michael. How are we doing? Um, you may remember us from our East Staker days, but we're a progressive group, and now we've moved on to Dark Forest. Not really forever, just for a minute. I should eat my cheese or stop eating my cheese as I'm talking. What should I do? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, put your answers up anyway. on the ether.io. Stop eating cheese or continue eating cheese. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I'm out. No more cheese. I'm done. <laughs> okay. So um, we've been playing Dark Forest. Actually, I'm trying to stop. I was going to say, um, playing is probably putting it nicely. I'd say obsessing, but, you know. It, it, that's what I do, though. Yeah. Like, that's who I am. <laughs> okay, so. Um, hold on, eat my cheese. Okay, back to the story. So, we've been playing with Dark Forest, and Dark Forest relies on transactions uh, on the XDI network. And um, as we've kind of suggested, like, the way to maximize the game is to automate a lot of things. And sometimes when you automate, you end up batching a lot of transactions. Um, and so I've had cases where I've sent a thousand transactions at one time, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, that would be when I crawl all level zero planets from all the planets that I have. Right. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, even if you're not doing a ton of transactions, you can still experience lag by interacting with... Um, the standard XDI node. And so one of the things that uh, we can do to speed up that interaction is to run a local XDI node. So then you're part of the network and you're not just depending on someone else's uh, node. Very so cool. to do that, where's, I have a, um, you're gonna find some directions down below. Michael and I are gonna walk through that real quick. Nothing is ever real quick. Uh, this is relatively easy, I think. Um, I will say that it's the... F yeah, this was very easy. This is the first time I've set up an XDI node. Um, I've used... So it's based on what we used to know as Parity that's now Open Ethereum. And the only kind of hang-up I ran into is that uh, you have to have an account uh, before the chain will start running. And so <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that I, that I did this right, but uh, I use my private key from, op uh, from Dark Forest. I was going to say Open Bazaar. Um, I, I use my private key from Dark Forest to generate a key that I imported into uh, the XDI node to run my, my client. Now, I don't think you have to do that in fact, I'm very, fairly confident you don't have to do that because the transactions are actually signed in your browser. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial and because it's not really that difficult and you might accidentally learn something, we're just going to do it the way that worked and then uh, we'll go from there. And right. so Michael's going to begin at xdichain.com slash developer slash install xdi client slash parity okay parity is a really interesting company is it it is I, it, so i'm not going to talk about it <laughs> i right. was going to i was going to give my spiel about parity but i have a lot of mixed feelings and so it's better that i just smile and nod um okay and so there are a um this big warning up here, don't use the latest version of Open Ethereum 3.1 Plus. Uh, instead, use... Um, so go to that download binaries thing. That link in the middle, in the... In the, uh, the, the link in the in, above. The GitHub, Open Ethereum, Parity, Ethereum releases. In the orange uh, caution window. Yes. Okay. And from there, um, the 3.0.1 is a valid release for XDI. So you can select the binary for Linux. Um, 
So you'll probably want to backspace on that, right click and save link as, or uh, copy link to, what is that called? Copy link address, yeah. And now you'll go to a terminal window. And you'll w get that. I, w I would not sudo it because it'll it'll jank up the permissions on you. Okay. That is interesting. Okay, so go back and um, I, I noticed that when you did it manually. But uh, so go back and at the bottom or down lower where it says releases, there's an actual link and just right click and copy the link to the Linux one. The top, the top, uh, yeah. It was weird that that did not. And so just try and W get that and see if it works. Okay. Yeah, that's weird, but cool. Yay, okay. So we are downloading the Open Ethereum uh, ETH1 client. Uh, it used to be called Parity. Parity gave it up, and the community adopted it, and now they maintain it. Um, the XDI chain runs using the Parity client. Um, so we're really just going to end up specifying a flag. So you should be able to unzip that. All right. Just unzip, and then open space, tab, whatever. You're probably gonna have to install uh, unzip, but we'll see. Uh, I would try it before you install anything. Sure. Uh, just just hit uh, o, o and then tab. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and you're gonna have to install unzip. Awesome sauce. And I'll do a list ls uh, dash long. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to need to um, change the permissions on that to change mod plus x open Ethereum. I want to do that as sudo, um, and it's just the, the one executable file. Yep. And hit enter. Now do a ls again. Perfect. Okay. So I I added a bunch of parameters there that you'll want to. Uh, so you could just try it first to see if it works. Um, and so let's run through these parameters real quickly. These are going to open up this node um, to anyone on your local network. And if you pour, if you forward ports uh, from the outside, it will also make this node available to other people outside. I would not suggest opening this node up or ports to this up to the outside um, if you're just doing it as a single use thing for Dark Forest. Um, so you're gonna run dot slash open Ethereum. And then dash dash chain is xdi. And so this is actually uh, using the client to download a completely different chain than ethereum dash dash rpc that's a remote procedure call and dash dash json rpc apis are all uh, and this is literally just opening the instance up for anything that connects to it to use it am i just doing that whole thing that whole Yep, yep. Okay. And when you get to JSON RPC interface, you're going to use uh, this machine. If it's the same one we used yesterday, it was 1.34. Um, you're just going to use that address to call it. Uh, yeah, that's. And I think when you do that, for me, it, it complained. Um, did you change your IP from yesterday? Yeah, there's a different machine. Okay. Um, so 
So it drew an error reading node key, no keys found. I'm not sure that that's the end of the world. No, okay, it's syncing. So cool. um, for me, that was just a learning step. I didn't really need to import a key, but I thought I did. So this is gonna be a ton easier than I thought it was gonna be. At this moment, you have an xdi node running. That All was right. that easy. I know, right? Um, and so now we're going to switch to your local terminal. Okay. And we're going to attempt to uh, connect to that port. Um, port 8545 is the default RPC port. Um, and an RPC port is like what lets an, an external machine connect to that instance of the chain and interact with it. And so we're just testing that it's going to let us connect. Great. So we're in. So you can control C there. Oh my gosh, this video is going to be like four minutes. <laughs> um, and now you're going to open up your Dark Forest instance. In the browser? Yes. OK. Uh, let's go here. Let's switch a couple things around quick. When I did it, like I saw the error. And nor normally, error errors are fatal and so you have to resolve them somehow um really it's just error reading a key it's not a, a executable error so i um ended up using geth to take my dark forest private key to create uh an importable uh key format and then i imported it into parity there's absolutely no reason to do all that silliness <laughs> don't be me <laughs> All right, so are we headed to Chrome? Oh, right, I forgot I'm sharing the wrong screen. Yes, I am currently signing in. Let me just switch over so you can see it. Here we go. Awesome possum. And now you're going to go to settings and scroll down where it says current RPC endpoint and change RPC URL. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I, I think you can type in that space. Okay. Now it's going to do this, this good and funny thing. It's going to test the RPC connection and it's not going to let you change it until it verifies that it's a good connection. Um, which is good because it means that noobs are not going to get kicked off a usable network. Okay. Um, but the funny thing that happened is I actually had to try three or four times before it actually said, okay, this is legit. Hmm. So you're going to change that to HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1. Whatever your. Oops. Okay. Uh, colon 8,000. Uh, colon 8545. And now, hit, so go ahead before you uh, hit anything, copy that because there's a 83% chance it's going to overwrite that. Okay. So hit change. Yep. Yeah. And so keep trying it a few times. I think it's going to wait for your chain to be completely synced, uh, but it does eventually. Okay. At it least does it, take. It will eventually um, take. Uh, and we know that because we verified that we can connect to that port. Um, as long as your IP is correct, which I do not recall, um, it will eventually pick it up. I will double check to be sh certain, but. And oh, the I fact think... that your node is still. Sorry. I see what you're saying. Nope, sorry, I was just thinking out loud. I, I did have the incorrect. <laughs> Go ahead and copy that again because it's. Oh, okay, so we, we switched over, which. It is so neat. Like I'm glad they coded it that way. Um, but you can see now your current RPC endpoint is that remote client on your local network. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're not going to be um, vying with a thousand people to get access to the same RPC. Uh, you're going to be a member, a full fledged member of the XDI network, and you can submit transactions um, as a full member 
without having to um, fight for uh, RPC space. That's so cool. That was too easy. What is that like? Seven minutes. 